in the course we are going to look at how you can be able to prepare a very good uh, report especially for site reports so we can bring in some templates and examples and show you how you can edit the templates properly to suit uh, your project or your site so these are the basic things that we'll be achieving in this uh, uh, training so like you know it's free of charge there is no cost attached to it so you take your time most people don't appreciate free things but we really really need to do whatever we can to give back to the society that is that is why we are doing this to ensure that everyone has something to benefit all right so you can see on the screen we'll be starting with microsoft word okay and if you have any question just what you have to do is to uh drop message in the chat box i'll take uh, I'll take a few minutes to read it and respond. Okay. Uh, let's start. This, what you are seeing on the screen is Microsoft Office uh, Word. It's Word and it's used for, uh, for documentation, for uh, keeping information and especially for typing you have maybe you want to type letters you want to type uh, uh, information noc so those basic things that they do and print it out it becomes a document it's done in microsoft word okay so not that you cannot do it in others you can do it in powerpoint also you can do it in excel also but for uh, you see how the screen looks it's very plain like a whiteboard. So that is how it looks. So every other information you will see on the screen is what you have inputted in it. So I will follow this step by step so that you will understand from, even if uh, you've not touched computer before, and this is the first time you are learning computer, you will be able to grab from the very beginning. So please pay attention if this is your first time, but if you've had some computer training before, also pay attention because there are some things you will also grab uh, in the course of the discussion. So practically speaking, for you to have a perfect uh, Microsoft Word or a perfect document formatted, what you need to understand is the contents of these tabs. If you see on the screen where my mouse is now, is called the ribbons. So this ribbon contains different tabs. And when you click on each of the tabs, it brings out uh, submenus or sub tabs that you follow to have anything you need to do. So we'll discuss from file. This first one from the left is file tab. After the file, you will have home. After the home, you have insert. After I start, you have draw, design, layout, references, mailing, review, view, and help. So these tabs you have on this ribbon, on this top, is that is where everything you need to work on Microsoft Word lies. So for you to select the right tab and select the uh, submenus that you uh, depend on what you want to do. So you know exactly where you have to go. So that is what we'll be looking at. We'll be selecting each of the tabs one after the other and perform the functions that follows it. All right. So the first thing you have to do is when you open, oh, you talk your, about when you open your Microsoft document, when you open your Microsoft document, you need to save it. You need to give it a name, right? You need to uh, give it a name so that when you open, when you want to open it next time, you will be able to uh, recognize it and know where it is. So that is what you do from, that is what you do from a uh, file menu. First of all, you go to file menu. On the left side, click on file. Okay. Then the next uh, 
submit it and open, you will see save. I see save. In menu, let me go back. Click on file, file menu. Then you will see save. So when you click on save, it will bring a dialog box that will ask you location <clears throat> where you want to save it inside the computer. Okay. Now in the computer, you have different uh, folders. The desktop, desktop folder is the one on your screen. When you open your computer, put in your password, that uh, environment you see is known as the desktop, right? So if you want to save the file on that desktop, you click on this PC, then you'll see desktop folder. You double click on it. When you double click on it, the desktop will open. So this, what we are seeing now on the screen is my desktop folder. So you give it a name. What name do you want to use to save the file? So maybe you want to give it, a, you want to say file one. That is the. So whenever you go to your desktop and look for file one, you will find it there because you have saved it on the desktop and the name you gave to it is file one. Now it's going to appear save as type. Can you see my, uh, my screen? Let me make it bigger. So save as type, type of file. This type of file is asking you which format do you want to save this file as? So now we have different file uh, formats. This is Word document. You have Word macro enabled documents. You have Word 97 to 2003. So it's good, it's better you leave it at Word document. This Word document will help you to uh, retrieve this file in any of the uh, versions of Microsoft Word. Okay, so even the latest version, it will open. In 20, uh, 2003 version, it will open. So you leave it as save as type Word document and you uh, click save. When you press save, it has automatically saved on your desktop. Now you check on the top, you'll see the name of that file, file one. Okay, that is how to save a file. Now you have the file already, and maybe you want to save it in another location, or you want to uh, duplicate it, or you want to change the name of that file. You can go through it by using save as. So to do save as, what you have to do is click same on that file, file menu on the left side, on the left top. You see where I click the file menu? Then you will see save as. See save as is just below save. This save as will open the dialog box asking you which location do you want to save it. So maybe I want to save it also on the desktop. I will select desktop. Okay. Now, because I selected save as, it's now giving me option to change the name of that file. Okay, so maybe I want to change the name as file two. Now you just click uh, save. It has saved and the name of the file has also changed. Okay, so this is how to change. This is how to save a file and how to uh, save it also, save it as. Okay, so the next thing we can do under the file menu is print. If after you have finished typing, then you want to uh, print your file, you want to send it to printer. What you have to do is you select, you click on file, file menu, and the next button you'll see there is print. So you click on print it will take you to the uh, dialog box presenting all the printers you have installed. So in this location, you select the name of the printer. You click on this drop down arrow. There you will see all the printers that are installed. The name of the printers installed in your office or at your home. 
or the printers that is connected. So you select that one. If you select that printer, then you change your settings of uh, what you want. Now, you want to print all the pages. Maybe you have finished typing and you have 10 pages and you want to print all the pages. So on this setting, you just leave it there as print all pages. But if you don't want to print all the pages, but you want to print a particular page, maybe you want to print page two out of the 10 pages, you just type here, type two. It, it will automatically uh, uh, identify that you want to print only the second page. You want to print the third page, you just change it and write page. But if you want to print, maybe you have 10 pages, you want to print from page one to page five, you just uh, write one to five. Okay? Enable you print uh, all, the, uh, all the pages from page one to page five. Okay, so that is for the pages. But if you don't want to print, if you want to print all of them, just select here and select all, all pages. So it will print all the number of pages you have. Okay, then the next thing you have to do is, you know, if you want to print all of them on one page, one, one page, or you want to print it double side, you know, the paper has two sides. You want it to come out uh, on one page from your what you have typed to come out on one paper, one page on one paper, or you want front and back, like front and back printing. You want to print on page one, page one on front, page two on back. So this is where you select it. You select here and select print on both sides. Print on both sides will allow, when you print the first page, it will come on first page. The second page, page two, will come on second page. Okay, that is print on both pages. But if you want to print only on one side, you want it to be coming on one one paper, one page, one paper. You just select print one sided. Okay, now this one, this other selection, uh, portrait orientation, it shows how you want that paper to. Uh, how you want the document to appear on the paper. So if it's going to be in portrait form or in landscape form, let me select landscape so that you see how, see, look at the my screen, look at the uh, document I have on my screen, see how it changed. So it's just like turning the paper you have in slanting form or in horizontal form. It has changed, this is landscape orientation. If you want it in portrait orientation, you select portrait, you see now it's standing straight. So this is how your document is going to print. That is how it's going to show. So you have to know these settings so that before you send, before you uh, uh, press on print, you have done all your settings uh, properly. Okay. So, after you have done this setting, the next thing, you just send it to printer. You press print. See the print on top here. Just press print. It will go to the printer, and you go to the printer and take your work. OK? So that is uh, on how to print. Now, we are still with file menu. On file menu, Do you have any questions? Somebody's uh, microphone is distracting me. You want to ask questions, you can raise up your hand, then I'll give you the opportunity to ask. Okay. On file menu, we have other uh, options that we need to look at. Print. The next one is share. So with this share, what it does is you will be able to do a, do a collaboration work with somebody. Maybe in your office, two people want to be uh, working on the same file, right? So what you have to do is you select share and you see here, share with people. Before you share with people, you have to save it on a cloud or you save it on a central uh, database in your office. 
So most offices have uh, uh, softwares that enable people to enable people to uh, to share files together. Okay, so when you save it on the cloud, then you'll be able to share with somebody else. Another person can be typing on page two while you are typing on page one. So this is what this function does. Okay, you can also share it in email. You select the person's email address and send it to him as shared file. So when he opens it, he has the option of editing the same document from where you stopped. Okay, so that is the uh, the option for share. The next option is export. When you select export, it will ask you the type of file you want to export it to. You know, this uh, we are working in Word file, which is a document file. So if you want to export it to PDF, maybe you want to change it to PDF, so you use this export uh, option. Okay, so when you say se select export, then it will ask you to change file type. So you can select the type of file you want to change it to into, you know, the document file. So if you want to change it to uh, uh, Word 97 to 2003, or you want to change it to rich test, you can change it. If not, you can uh, create PDF out of it. PDF is a type of format where mm, the, the person you are sending it to cannot be able to edit it anymore, right? Except maybe he has a, a, your permission or he has a PDF editor, but he cannot edit that file again if you convert it to PDF. So using this export function, you'll be able to PDF file out of that your file so that the person that sent me to will not be able to edit it. That is the function of this uh, uh, export. Okay, so we have done. We are done with this file uh, menu. Now the next menu is home. On home menu is majorly where you you have your uh, environment, your world environment to work on. So, what can you do here? First, you have a uh, your uh, keyboard. You type whatever you want to type. This is our first class on computer training. All right, so you see from my typing, I had uh, an underline. So this red underline means the spelling is correct. This underline shows that the spelling is incorrect. That is what this red underline shows. So when you are typing and you see this red underline, it means you have made a, a, an error. So you should look for the uh, correct spelling. So but pointing on it will give you options. Okay, to give you uh, the correct spelling. So if that is the option that is uh, available to you, is the right thing you want to type. You just select it, and it will automatically uh, correct that uh, error that you made. Okay. So on this home menu, also this is where you have, you have, you can do all the formats you want to do. So let's say first, this is what I have typed, and it looks small for me. Maybe I want to increase the size. It's called font size. Font size, you want to increase it to uh, something bigger. So what do you do? You highlight it. How do you highlight it? You click from the beginning, hold the mouse, and drag. Drag the mouse across the file, across the uh, uh, the words you have typed. So it has been highlighted. So whatever effect you do now will affect the highlighted uh, text. Okay. So we want to change the font style. We want to change the font style. And now it's on Calibri body. See where I'm pointing. So I want to change it to something that looks uh, uh, more fashionable. I'll select the drop down arrow. Maybe select this one, area black. 
you see, it has changed the font style. Font style simply means how the uh, the words or how the text you have typed will appear. That is the font style. So you can change. You can keep selecting until you get the type of font style you want. So this is where it is done. You see, I've gotten different types of font uh, style. All right, so now the size is small for me. I want to increase it. So what do I have to do? I want to increase the font size. So with the text highlighted, what you have to do, this, this drop-down arrow here, you click on it and select the size you want. You select the size you want. You see, I've selected 36, so the uh, font size is bigger. Okay, so that is how to increase the font style and change the uh, the font style and increase the font size. So that is for that. Then you can, the next thing you can do is to bold it. Maybe you want it to be a look bold. So you just click on B. You see the, the test is now bolder. Another thing you want to do is italics. Italics will make your uh, test to uh, appear in slatin form. So if you click italics, you see the test has uh, changed direction. It looks like it's slanting, it's bending. Okay. So if you want it, if you want a line under under the test, you select this U, which is the underline. You see, there is a line running below the test. Okay, so if you want to cross it, like strike through it, for example, you want to write a Naira or you want to write N denoting Naira. You've written N like this and you want to uh, strike uh, across it. So what you have to do is just select it and click that, uh, select it and click this strike through here. See this image here? If you select it, it will uh, across the test you have written. Okay. Now, the next one there is subscript. Subscript is when you, after writing some tests and you want the, the next test to appear like uh, it's going to be below the other tests. Let's say I've written this and I have one. So I want this one to come down, not, not to be at the same line with uh, the, the word. So I'll just select the one and click on this uh, subscript. You see, the one has uh, gone down. So, but if this one, you want it to go uh, above, like you have written 10th, 11th, 1st, something like that. You want it to, uh, let's say I, I wrote second, and I want this second not to be on subscript. I want it to be on superscript. So I'll click on this other one here. It will go up. Can see that. So this is how to achieve this things. So the next thing that you can achieve is if you have typed a particular information or a particular test and you want to convert that test to uppercase, maybe you use the, you've already finished typing and you, you, you don't want to delete them and start typing again. So this is what I've typed is in lowercase all through, but I want to change all of them to uppercase. So I don't have to delete them and start typing again. 
So what I will do is I will highlight it, highlight the test, and go here. You see this place where I'm pointing, where you can change case. So just select the drop down arrow and select upper case. It will automatically change everything you have typed, everything you selected from the lower case to upper case. Now is in upper case, you want to change lower case also, just do the same thing. Go to that area and select lower case. Everything you selected, all the tests you selected will go down to lower case. You don't need to uh, delete them and start typing again or change you into caps lock to start typing again. Okay, so from there also, if you want to make each of the first uh, word, if for each letter, the first letter of each of the words to be capital letter or to be caps in caps lock, you just select this one, capitalize each word. You see, it has changed the C, the T, and the U to uh, capital letters. That is how to achieve that. Now, you've typed something and you want to color it. How do you do it? Just select the test by clicking and highlighting it. And you see this A with a color below it is font color. You can use it to change the color of the test. You just select the drop down arrow there and select the color you want to change the test into. That is it. Okay. Now, this other one here that looks like a, a pencil, see where I'm pointing, test highlighting tool. So this test highlighting tool, what it does is that it will, uh, the test will remain its color, but the background of that test will have uh, the color you have selected. So if you want to give this test a background, look at it now, it doesn't have any background. So if I highlight the test and come to this uh, uh, test highlighting color, select the drop down arrow and select the color I want it to highlight it. So this is how it's going to be. It will just highlight uh under that test with the color you've selected okay this is how to achieve these things so all these things i'm doing is known as what formatting so if you have done all the formattings or you have done a lot of things and you don't want it again you want to remove them the right tool you need is this one known as clear all formatting you see where I'm pointing, clear all formatting. So what you have to do is select the test that you want to remove what you have uh, formatted. I'll select this one here, this one with the green highlight. I'll select it, and then I'll click on clear all formatting. You see, it has returned to the uh, how it was. Okay, so let's look at... The next thing you can format is a uh, bullet point. When you are typing and you want your information or the items, you are, maybe you want to list items. You want to say a uh, list of uh, uh, mail names. Okay. And you want them to appear in bullet points. So how to achieve that is just click on this uh, bullet. You see where I'm pointing? Just click on this bullet. So whatever you are typing will be having bullet points. So you can, the bullets have different types. You can select uh, the how you want it to appear. You can select this one. Or you can select this one that look like tick. You can select this one that look like arrow. So this is how bullet points. So you'll just type the names, maybe James. If you click your enter on your on your keyboard, it will go to the next line with another bullet point expecting you to type in something. You press the enter key, it will go to the next line, giving you a space to type another thing. So that is how to use bullet point.
Okay, so the next uh the next thing you can do is numbers. So instead of having bullet points, you want to uh, the test you are writing to be in numbers. You want to number them. This is where to go. Next to the bullet is numbers. So you select numbering. And the numbering have different types. You can, you can decide to uh, use numbers one, two, three, or you can decide to use A, B, C, or you can decide to use Roman uh, numerals. So this is the samples of the how it will appear. Yes. This is how you can number them. So you type what you want. When you press your enter key to go to the next line, give you the second number. So that is it. That is how numbering works. Okay. So we are still dealing with formatting. The next uh, tool we'll be looking at is known as alignment. Alignment is talking about how you position your test on this uh, work environment. And when you print it out, how it's going to appear. So we have left alignment, we have center alignment, and we have uh, right alignment. So if I put my cursor here, it's already on left alignment. If I press right alignment, the test will automatically align to the right. You see? Let me press left again so that it will return to the left. This is our first class on computer. It has returned to left alignment, but I want it to go to the right. I'll click on right and it will go to Right, that is right alignment. So if I want it to be on the center, you press this one, this one will centralize it. Whatever you have typed will be at the center, maybe the heading or anything that you want to centralize on the, on the center. So you can do this to, uh, you can select a particular test and do the alignment and it will position wherever you want it to position. Okay, so the next thing you can do is line spacing. You see these uh, names that I've written here, James, Kenneth, Kevin. Maybe to me, it looks uh, clustered. Maybe it's, uh, uh, the space is not enough. I want to separate them. I want to give them enough space. So I can select the names, click on this uh, line and paragraph spacing. I hope you can see where my cursor is. So when you click on it, you can be able to give it the space you want. If I select 3.0, can you see the distance I have now between the three names? Okay. I can select again, maybe 1.5. You see the type of space I have. I can select maybe 2.5. You see this type of space, the level of space I have in between the names. So this is how you do your uh, line spacing. Okay, so the other important tool there is this uh, shading tool. So this shading tool, what it, has, it does is that it will change the color uh, behind the text or the paragraph or even the, the table. So if you select this, test now and select a color here and give it to it. So you see the entire line of that test have, have uh, gotten that color. Okay. So this one is borders. We'll come to this when we go to insert menu. We'll start insert menu just now. All right. So this is uh We've thought about all the items we have on this uh, environment. Now, this one you see here is your pre-formatted uh, pre format. Maybe if you want this to be your heading, this is our first class on computer. You want it to be your heading. You just highlight it and go straight to this pre-formatted uh, uh, 
form parts. Just select it and it will automatically give it that type of format that has been pre-formatted by the uh, system. So that is it for the home menu. We start on the insert menu soon. So, but before we go into insert menu, uh, let me give room for uh, questions or any, if anything is uh, confusing you, you need clarification, you can ask now. Okay, in the absence of any question or any clarification, we'll continue. So I'm glad that everybody is following. So let's continue. So let's go to, uh, let's treat the insert menu. I hope we'll be able to finish uh, everything about Microsoft Word today. So in the insert menu, it's where you have, you can bring in things from outside this uh, Microsoft Word. You can bring in pictures, you can bring in uh, shapes, you can uh, bring in videos. So this is where you can do it in the on the insert menu. So the first thing you can insert is table. So let's look at how you insert table. Let me clear my screen. So, First, you go to insert, you click on the insert menu. Then you're on the table now. You click on the drop down arrow. You will see different lines. What it's asking you is how many rows and how many columns do you want? Rows are the lines running from left to right. That's the horizontal lines. Whereas columns are the vertical lines, right? So let's say I want three rows. I want three rows. This is three. Three uh, horizontal lines. That is three rows. And I want also two columns. That is two vertical lines. So I'll select uh, two. So this is my table. I have table now comprising of three rows and two columns. Okay, so I'll repeat that again for in case uh, somebody missed something. You click on insert, click on the drop down arrow below table. And knowing how many rows and how many columns you want to select, this you point at the bosses as you count the number of rows you want to create. So I want to create three rows, I'll count two. This is three, three rows. And columns, columns are the vertical lines that will divide this table. Maybe I want uh, five columns. I'll highlight and press my mouse. It will appear three rows and five columns. So here you can then, it's a table. You can tabulate, tablet your uh, ideas. Maybe here I want, the name of boys. The next uh, column, I want the name of girls. The next column, I want the school's name. The other column, maybe I want uh, uh, subjects. So this is what you use table for. And this is how you insert it. So if along the line, you already you, the number of columns you have is not sufficient for you, you want more. So you can insert more. So what can you, how can you do it? You can take some, this shortcut, just right click in the last uh, column, 
and you see a SAT, click on a SAT, and then se uh, select a SAT column to the right. SAT column to the right will give you another column on the right side. That is how you get more, more columns in case the one you have before is not enough for you. But if you now you have more and you want to remove one of the columns, what you have to do, just highlight that column and you click on delete and select delete column. You see that column, uh, that vertical line has gone. That is how to work on the tables. Okay, so if you want to give the table some designs, you just see this uh, cross here, select it, it will select the entire table so that you can change the, the appearance of the table. You see the format, already pre-designed uh, format here. So you can select any type of format you need. The shadings, what type of colors you want to give to it. So this is, you can select different uh, formats. Okay, now we are still in a SAT, an insert menu. So from the insert menu, you can not just insert uh, only table, you can insert pictures. Maybe you have a particular picture, maybe you are trying to do a report, you have observations, something like that, and you want to insert the picture. So this is where you go. You click on insert, then come to pictures. Then just click on this drop down arrow here. Where is the picture located? It's inside this device. So the picture you already transferred it to this computer, maybe from your phone. So you click on this device and it will take you to it will take you to your computer where you will now search for the location, the location where you kept that picture and select the picture, click on insert what happens, the picture appears on your uh, working environment, okay? So you can position it however you want. We have done uh, uh, alignment. You want it to go center, you can align it. You want it to go right, you can align it, okay? Now, this picture that is here now, you see that it's in line with the test. That means whatever you do to the test, you can do to it. But if you want it to be on top of the test, that means you want to click and uh, move it around on top of a test. Okay. So what you have to do is select the picture. you see this uh, sign that appears on the right of it. Click the layout options. And you see it's already in, in line with test. But now I want it to be uh, over the test. So I will click this one. So it's now above the test, so I can be able to move it around on top of the any test I have. So that is how you can be able to uh, manipulate the pictures there. So this picture also, you can format it. Microsoft Word have some, uh, uh, they have some advanced features that you can use to, uh, you can change the color of the picture, you can, uh, crop it out, you can remove some parts that you don't want. So what do you have to do? Select the picture, click on format, okay? So when you come to the format, you'll see color. If you want to change the color, you'll be able to change the color of the picture, however you, you want it, okay? You can be able to, maybe I want this color, okay? So on the picture also, you can remove background. Remove background will uh, help you. Maybe you want only you want only the 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 uh, image, the human being there. You don't want the other containers there. So you can select remove background. So when you select remove background, it will automatically highlight the areas that will be removed. So these areas showing on uh, purple color will be removed. Okay, these ones that are bright will remain. So but if you have selected some areas that are going to be removed, like this, uh, the lady's trousers is going to be removed because it's highlighted, but I don't want it to be removed. What do I, I need to select that part to keep it. So I go uh, on to this area where you have this plus sign. So if you click on the plus sign, 
then you come to that area where you want to uh, you don't want to remove and draw the line down it how do you draw the line hold your mouse and and uh, click there hold the mouse and uh, draw it down okay it will automatically detect some areas that is going to be left that will not be deleted okay so maybe see this container side is still showing that it's going to it's not going to be deleted but i want to remove it so i'll click i'll select this one mark areas to remove see where my mouse is mark areas to remove i will then mark these areas that i don't want i want to remove them so these areas are going to be removed. so this is i'm i'm done with this i'll click out if I click out, you see that all those other areas are no more showing. This is what I have. Okay. Then you can do some crop. You see the image is still uh, maintaining the size of the formal image. So I want to uh, crop out these uh, sites that I do not want. Okay. So this is the crop here on the right hand side. You select crop. Then you move out some of the parts that you don't want. Just adjust using the uh, the shape that appeared there. So this is what you have. Only this ten left. So that is how to bring image inside the Microsoft Word. Okay. So apart from image, you can insert shapes. So maybe you want uh, this type of shape. You just click on the shape and it will appear. I mean, so click on insert, click on shape, and uh, select the shape that you want. When you come there, you draw it. So this is the shape. This is how you can insert shape. So there are other things you can insert. You can insert icons, like uh, you want some icons. It will take you to, it will load some icons already installed in the Microsoft Word. Like this one, uh, accessibility icons. You just select it, uh, I icon. Select it, maybe clock, and click insert. They will all of them will appear on your Word environment. Okay, so this is you do, what you have to do. You just uh, position them where you want them to be and arrange it very well on your file. So the other things you can insert is smart art. Smart art is uh, what you can use to. Uh, make your presentation or your information look very smart. Okay, so select, insert, come to Smart Art, then it will bring out different options for you. What do you want? Process or cycle form. So you just look at the type that you want, just click on it and click OK. It will automatically come in there. So you will now change, enter the test you want. Maybe you want a cycling, there's or information that will revolve around. So this is smart, uh, smart art will help you to achieve that. Okay, so what else you have under insert? We can insert uh, 3D models. You can insert chart. This chart, you can use it to, maybe you need to plot some graphs. Uh, you This is where it comes. You click on chart. Okay, select the type of chart. Is it pie chart, line chart, or bar chart? So the type of chart you, you want, you select it and click OK. It's loading. It will appear immediately. It has finished loading. You see the chart? So this is the chart you, you have. So this chart, you can now edit the information you have here. Uh, category names series. This is what it has plotted for you. It plotted this chart using this information here. So any changes you made in making this information, 
will automatically affect what will appear on the chart. So this one is five. If I change it to uh, seven, it will it will affect the the chart will automatically change value. See, so this is how you can uh, insert charts in your Microsoft Word. So if you are typing or you have informations you want to appear in a plotted form, you can do it uh, under this uh, insert chart. So the other things we have, screenshot. If you want to take screenshot of uh, your windows, like where we are now is open, you can just come to insert and click a uh, screenshot. So it will automatically capture whatever we have on the screen. Okay, so let's look at other things you can do here, header and footer. Header and footer is uh, when you have, when you see a file, you see the same information appearing on page one, the same information on page two, the same information on page three, on all the information. So the person that typed it did not repeat it. It just he just put it under a header. So you click on the search, come to header. Okay, click on header, and you select the type of uh, how you want your header to look like. So I want my header to look like this. Now I will edit the information on the header. I will say, let me say my the information I want is, I want computer, computer training. So this is what I have on my header. So it will appear the same way on page two. If I if my word file gets to page two, you see this is second page is already there on the second page. On the third page is also there. On the uh, fourth page is also there. You see this is how to do this header that you you see I have the same information on page one, page two, page three. Is done under header so that you you don't need to copy them and repeat them. Okay, so it will automatically appear as you are increasing in the page. So the same thing happens with footer. Footer header will appear on the top, while footer will appear on the bottom of the page. So this is footer. You say click on insert, click on footer, then you select the the type of footer you want. This is the type you want, or you want this type, three column footer, or you want a, 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 let's use three column footer so that you know how you can do it. So on three column footer, you have three different spaces to write something. You can say that uh, here you can have document number, You can have page number, maybe page page uh, one. So it will automatically increase. Here you can have maybe date. Okay, so this is uh, footer. So on the footer, what you have on the first page of the footer, you will have it repeated on the second page. You have it repeated on the third page. And uh, most times if we insert as a page number, it will keep increasing. Page one, page two, as you're increasing, the, the document will be updating itself. Okay, so that is how we insert header and footer. Page numbers. If you want, uh, you are typing more than uh, one page and you want each of the pages to have their number there. So you, you do it by inserting page number. You select this, uh, drop down arrow, where do you want the page number to appear? Is it on the top of the page or you want it at the bottom of the page? Okay, so let's say we want to put it in the page, in the top of the page. What type of page number do we have? Let's use this one. So you see, this is page four. See the first one, page one. If you go to second one, you will see it automatically updated the page, the pages, gave them numbers. Page two. I'm scrolling down. Page three. So this is how 
uh, page number, what it does. It will automatically update the as as your uh, pages in, is increasing, the page number is increased. So you will not have uh, make any mistake. Okay. So this is how to insert. We have done header footer and we've done page number. So the next thing you can insert is test bus. So in case maybe you want a, a different item or you want a, a test to appear on top of a picture, you can use speed test bus to achieve that. So select on insert, select on test bus, and select the type of test bus you want. This is what we want. And we want uh, to write maybe you have picture number one, something like that. You want to use it to uh, name the pictures. So this can be your test bus. So you can be able to move the test bus and keep it at any point you want it to appear. That is the, the use of the test bus. Okay, so we've been able to cover uh, three menus today. Uh, I think we it's not uh, we are not too slow, but tomorrow we will cover as many uh, uh, menus as possible. So this is where we we'll stop for today. Before we go, if you have any question or any clarification, you can ask. Any questions, any clarifications, any confusion? All right, so I'm Thank glad that- so much, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir, we really appreciate this great opportunity. The simple question I have, sir, during the inserts, when we were working on that insert, after the shapes, you clicked on, uh, you clicked on something that brought out all these uh, like little pictures. I yeah. did not really get it's our it's part. Icons. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. If you click on insert, you click on icons. So on those, it will now load because there is a lot of icons uh, 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 that came with the computer. So you can select the type of icons you want. Maybe you want animals, you can select animals okay. and they will come. Is the icon under the... Insert menu. It's under the insert, menu. yeah. It's under the insert menu, so you just I click I click the insert menu now. It doesn't show anything like icon here. It only shows the table pictures, online pictures, shapes. Which uh, version of your word are you using? Word sixteen. Word sixteen. Okay. Uh, that might not be 16, it might be older version. Okay, so I will I will check the version you are using and I will show you where it is. Okay, sir. Yeah, so just private chat me, I will check the version you are using. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, so any other question? All right, so thank you all for joining today and I appreciate your time as well. So let's let's meet again tomorrow by eight. Okay, thank you, boss. All right. Thank you, thank you Mr. Johnson. I well, appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, it's tomorrow. Yeah, stay tomorrow.